This is Lee at Crash Test Hobby, where we make great flying planes at last. They'll change the way you feel about flying. You'll see our planes night flying and sky painting. You'll see our planes with bomb drops, doing contest flying, aerial video, and park flying. But let's get on with the video. We're going to continue with uh, cutting a slot for the radio between the dowels. We like our solid fuselage because you can mount a radio securely in a plane that will protect it. You're going to cut the e-tape and laminate with a sharp razor blade before cutting the foam. You can cut the foam with a soldering iron or a box knife or pliers and scrape it with a screwdriver to make the slot. Your goal is to leave as much foam as possible because you're making it stronger in that respect. When you're building a pod mounted albatross, the radio is behind the pod. In a nose mounted uh, configuration, the ESC is in front of the wing with the motor on the nose. Uh, in this particular case, I had different plugs on the battery, so kind of was hiding that in my hand. We're going to mark out where the servos go. They are an inch and a half behind the rear dowel. Just using a soldered iron iron or a box knife, cut a hole deep enough that the servo arm is just above the top of the fuselage. Press the servos into the hole and using a razor blade cut a line for the wires to go through into the radio box. Now we're going to mount the motor on the pod. The propeller should have a half inch clearance to the fuselage. And I mark the spots that I'm going to put screws into. I color the pod since it will be easier than once the motor is mounted. Cut the pod to length and then install the back plate and the motor. The motor sits up above the wing, faces straight forward, is not tipped forward or back or to the right or left. On the nose, the motor is tipped down and to the right to compensate for the lift of the wing. We're now going to bind the radio, put in the bind plug, then the plug to the speed control, then plug in your two servos. We'll figure out which one is which in a minute here. We're now going to plug in the battery and you'll see the light flashing in the receiver. With my left forefinger, you'll see me pull the binding switch on the transmitter and the receiver will flash and then it will go to a solid light which says it is bound. At that point, you should be able to move the servos and then double check and you can see the prop turning in this case making sure that the prop is turning I also check it this time to make sure its prop is on the right direction using your glue gun glue the servos in put glue on both the sides and the two ends of the servo and then with a sixteenth inch bit enlarge every other hole so you can move the rods in and out as you need to to get more or less movement I'm using an X-Acto knife to cut slits in the rudder and in the elevator for the horns. You'll see how I slide the horn up through. You want the front of the horn right along the hinge line of each and the push rods are going to connect to it. Taking my soldering iron I punch a hole so glue can flow up, flow up the side of the horn and then push it into place and put a little glue on the top so it won't start scooting back down the hole. Let's do the same thing on the rudder. Punch a hole Put the horn in part way, squeeze a little glue on the top and the bottom, pull it through, and then put some glue on the top and the bottom of the horn. We're now going to install the Easy Connectors. Once again, using a 16th bit, I drill the very top hole in the horn and push the Easy Connector down through like this. Put the snap on the bottom. Notice I put the snap on backwards because of the shape of the horns. So it works better this way and then put this screw in the top. Let's do it on the elevator. Drill through, put the easy connector in, put the snap on, pinch it on with pliers, and put the screw in. We're now going to install the push rods. Slide the push rod through the easy connectors on each side. 
and put the servo arms on the servos. Reinstall the battery and make sure the servos are working. Put screws in the servo arms to hold them down. Now in this particular case I noticed that my rudder servo is running on the elevon elevator stick so I'm going to trade the plugs in the receiver for the two servos which now makes them work correctly. There's the rudder moving and now I'm tightening down the elevator screw to lock it into place. Now I'm cutting the push rods to length and you can see how they move. In the middle of the push rod, you want to put a guide so that the push rod will not bow when it gets pressure on it. There are some bent wires in your kit that you can slide it, put glue in the hole and slide the staple down into the hole and it will keep the wires from bowing. Now notice the direction here. With the radio behind, when you push the stick to the right, the rudder goes right. When you pull back, the elevator goes up. Notice also my hand position on the transmitter. Uh, that's how I hold the radio when I fly. We're now going to install the battery. And hopefully the battery will balance your plane. So you want to keep the battery as far forward as you can. Once again, we're going to cut through the laminate and the tape with a razor blade. Soldering irons don't like to cut through the E-tape. And then I'm going to make the initial cut for the battery and pull it out with some pliers. Because the battery goes almost all the way through the fuselage, I have to make multiple layer cuts with the soldering iron to get down through. You want the battery to have a tight fit. And just using a screwdriver, I'll pull those odd pieces out. Now in this particular case, because the ESC is behind the pod, I need an extension of some sort in order to have the power cable reach. But there is one other option here. Uh, where this is a pod motor, the motor isn't out on the nose helping to balance the plane, so I'm going to put a bigger battery in the plane in order to help balance it. If you're going to add weight, it may as well be battery. And in this particular case, I don't need any extension because the battery uh, reaches far enough. I'm now installing a Velcro strap this is just so I don't eject the battery while I'm flying. With the front motor mount, uh, the battery and the speed control are ahead of the wing, like as shown, and uh, it helps them to balance and the, get the plugs to reach. Once again, I had two different battery plugs there, so I'm trying to hide it so you won't notice in my hand. Notice the angle on the motor. This is needed in order to get the plane to trim in. I'm putting some wire ties around the wires up the pod. Uh, I have had the wires move in the wind and get against the motor bell and wear themselves out and short out. So tie your wires down. You can also use electrical tape there if you want. When you put rubber bands on the plane to hold the wing down, use a crossing pattern. And then I usually put a straight pattern with two or three rubber bands. I usually use at least six rubber bands to attach the wing to the fuselage. Once again, we're going to discuss painting. A uh, little bit of paint brings a plane to life. In this particular case, I've masked it with duct tape and with some extreme tape on the tail. And I'm spraying with some orange and some black paint that's Krylon Fusion, which is a paint for plastics. And you'll notice uh, this is the entire paint job here. I did not spend very much time having to do it, but the results look great. Be careful not to add too much paint. You, uh, it adds a lot of weight, especially anything behind the center of gravity. You can also use permanent markers, which add almost no weight at all. So that's another option, plus it's something you can do later on your plane just to make it look better. The paint is still wet while I'm peeling the tape. But this is the plane we built. 
looks great, flies great. Now you can see the spar, it's three and three quarters inches back from the nose. I mean, excuse me, from the front of the wing. The important part of this is that's also where the center of gravity is. So if you'll put your fingers underneath the wing and put your fingers on the spar and lift the plane up, the plane will balance on your fingers. If your plane is not balancing, you either need to add weight to the nose or tail to balance it, or you need to move the wing. Thank you for watching. Here's a list of the equipment we used in the video. We hope that these videos will help you get your plane built and get out and fly. This is Lee with Crash Test Hobby.